Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about The Roundhouse by Lewis Erdrich. So The Roundhouse was uh, a winner of the National Book Award. Um, this is the pick for my book club that I mentioned last review. This was one of two picks actually. I finished this book in like five days, I, which is pretty fast for me because um, it does usually take me the whole month. <laughs> I really enjoyed this book. Uh, today I'll be going over some themes, parallels, symbolism, and then a few cons. So the roundhouse is told from the perspective of Joe, who is a young Native American boy living on a reservation in North Dakota. At the start of the novel, Joe has just turned 13 and his mother is brutally attacked. He's raped and beaten and quickly falls into a deep depression. Joe's life and the family dynamic is changed forever. Joe's mother won't speak of the circumstances. She won't say who did it. Um, and most of the roundhouse consists of Joe trying to figure out the circumstances surrounding the attack and who raped his mother. This novel is gripping. I was had a hard time putting this book down. I was hesitant at first because I thought it would really depress me. Um, but it's actually one of the most gripping novels I've read in a while. And not because it was an easy read, um, but because of the way that the novel is written um, I and the way that the mystery unfolds and how well the book is written, I was very invested in finding out what had happened. Okay, so lots of spoilers going forward, um, including spoiling who, you know, attacked Joe's mother. Um, so if you don't want that spoiled for you, this is when you should stop the video. I think the story being told in retrospect by an older Joe um, gives the novel, um, lends itself incredibly well to the unfolding of certain events and gives the novel an atmosphere of both dread and inevitability. As the reader, we know that older Joe knows everything that is to come, um, so all we can do is just sit there and anticipate it. There is a certain thread of, I'm not sure what to call it, I think it's probably magical realism um, throughout the story. Joe sees ghosts, he believes in signs, in spirits, etc. And so in that manner I felt like having the older Joe narrate the novel um, lends him a sort of godlike presence um, and which was very fitting for the story. So let's talk about some of the themes um, and symbolism in the, in the book. First, it's a coming of age story for sure. Uh, the trauma that happens to Joe and his mother vaults him into a sort of um, premature adulthood almost, um, but he's still a boy who has just entered teenagehood. He's wondering about girls, but he hasn't really gotten there yet. Um, he has a giant crush on an older woman named Sonia. Um, his body is growing, but he's still interested in all the kid boy things like <laughs> riding bikes with his friends, swimming, exploring, etc. Um, he's already a sort of jumble of childhood and adulthood um, and somewhere in between. In a similar vein, I felt like one of the biggest themes of the book um, that, that the Roundhouse explores is the idea of masculinity and manhood. Joe has several figures of manhood in his life. Um, the first is his father who was a tribal judge. And at the start of the novel, he sees his father as wise in a very mysterious way, definitely an authority figure, um, and eventually realizes that the law is incredibly complicated and messed up, and there isn't much actual power that his um, father holds. Um, and he sort of loses a little bit of his respect and faith in, the in his father and faith in the system because of that. Um, but he comes back around towards the end um, of the novel to respecting it as the best that his father can do in the circumstances with their tribal history um, and what his father is given. There's also Father Travis who is a priest who lives on the reservation. Um, he is a white man, he's not from the reservation, he's not Native American. He's physically described as being very built um, and domineering um, but his literal manhood <laughs> doesn't function as it once uh, did because of a bombing he lived through. Um, and there are certain figures such as Whitey, um, who is sometimes okay, but who can get violent and abusive when he drinks. Um, and then there are also Joe's friends around him, um, you know, 
he loves them they they spend a lot of time together doing certain activities but they also you know get into trouble and they drink and they <laughs> do maybe unwise things for boys their age another thread that runs through the novel is the experience of being a person of color specifically being native american um, and the depth of trauma um, that affects Joe and his community throughout the story. Joe himself isn't poor by reservation standards, but he's probably lower middle class um, by most people's standards. Um, and this awareness of poverty amongst his friends in the community is present throughout the novel. Um, some of them live in very poor conditions. Um, they get things secondhand or they're finding things or they're just generally aware of having and of not having and very much wanting. There's also the theme of fate, the inevitability of terrible things that happen to us, um, dwelling on what could have been, um, dwelling on the moment right before something terrible happened and if we had just done that one thing or just not done that one thing or just waited five seconds, um, you know, that terrible thing wouldn't have happened to us. There is one reflection of this in the story that Father Travis um, tells Joe about witnessing the day JFK was shot and how a dog ran into the middle of the road and someone pulled the dog back before the before the um, cars came and if they had just left the dog there you know like five seconds longer then maybe JFK wouldn't have been shot. So another major theme obviously uh, is trauma. This book is about trauma and one of the things trauma does to people is make them grow up too fast. They have to deal with something that at Joe's age he is just he is forming his identity and himself in many ways and this trauma shapes him at a fragile state. There's a point in the novel where Joe's mom opens up about what happened to her to to Joe and Joe's father um, and afterwards Joe, uh, Joe's father tells him like you shouldn't have heard that or whatever and Joe says I had to know it's good to know I said but it was a poison in me I was just beginning to feel that. And I felt like that was a really powerful line reflecting how trauma sort of seeps into you um, and once it's in you there's nothing that you can do to stop it affecting you. So now I'm going to go over a few moments of symbolism or what I saw as symbolism. Um, the first is right on the very first page of the book. Um, it start, this novel starts with uh, Joe removing small trees um, from the foundation of his parents house. I saw that as a symbol of the after effects of the uh, rape of Joe's mother um, and how that event and the ensuing trauma um, worms its way into the foundation of their family and creates cracks and fissures and sort of destroys the normalcy of their family dynamic. There's also a brief moment of symbolism with the dog at the um, at JFK's parade that I mentioned earlier. Um, so uh, Basically, <laughs> JFK has just been shot and there is just this panic and people are running everywhere and, the do and that gun dog that ran to the middle of the parade gets loose um, and this is the line. The gun dog sniffed a fallen woman and then stood beside her, pointing gravely and motionlessly at the stuffed bird on her hat. So obviously, you know, someone has actually been murdered and the gun dog is pointing at a fake bird. Um, and I saw that as symbolic or maybe a parallel to how Joe and his friends suspect Father Travis is the is the attacker at first um, and uh, they uh, point at him while the real attacker is on the loose. And then another symbol is that of the Wendigo. Um, Joe's grandfather Musham tells him the story of a woman who was the grand, I think the mother of a friend of his, and Joe's grandfather is quite old, so this is like an older story, um, who was at one point um, accused of being a Wendigo, who is sort of like a supernatural creature that is formed or gains its power or becomes um, who it is from eating the flesh of other humans. So it's this incredible act of violation towards another human being. Um, that creates a monster and I saw that as symbolic of Lyndon becoming a monster or being a monster because of because of the violation that he does to other people specifically Joe's mother and then Joe then has to kill him just as the men who thought um, the woman was a Wendigo thought they were obligated to kill her. 
if you've had any sort of tragic event in your family, um, I think that uh, certain ways Joe's family, Joe's family deals with the event um, will strike you as almost unbearably <laughs> truthful. So there is a moment on page uh, 240, if you have the, if you have the paperback, where they're all sort of eating dinner after, um, and here's a line, there was farmer ham and a bowl of fresh peas from the garden. My mother said a little prayer to bless the food and we all talked about Cappy's run. I even told them Cappy's joke. We stayed away from the fact of Lark's existence or anything to do with our actual thoughts. And I thought that was so incredibly powerful. Um, there's the initial shock and grief. There's wanting to go back to normal, not being able to go back to normal, grieving that you can't go back to normal or the moment right before. Um, there is the attempt to make everything as it used to be um, and all the ways you, you don't know how to communicate um, that there's this ma big massive hurt hovering over you. Um, so you talk about everything but that hurt. Just hoping that if you do that, that hurt will go away, but it doesn't. So I want to talk about a couple of parallels that I noted in the book. Um, the first one is when um, at the very end of the book, actually, Joe has gone through a lot. Um, and he um, has at this point, uh, has at this point murdered Lyndon. Um, he goes back home to his parents and the line is, I walked past them and continued until I reached the stairs. I carefully took the steps. As I went up, drawn in my weariness as if by a rope, I felt their eyes on me. I recalled this happening before at some time, and me watching. I was halfway to my room before I remembered my mom, my mother climbing to that place of loneliness from which we feared she would never descend. And so it was a moment that called back to at the beginning of the book after the mom gets attacked, how she went up the stairs one night, uh, very lonely, very lonely and sort of like drawn up into her solitude. And then at the end of the book, the same thing is happening to Joe. And so um, I want to talk very briefly about the ending line of the book, um, which is after Cappy has passed away uh, from a car accident. He was driving drunk with Joe and his friends and you know, they have an accident. Um, Kathy passes away, Joe's parents come to pick him up from the hospital. Um, and then the very end of the book is, we just kept going. That's the ending line. As humans, we want to believe that revenge can satisfy us or that justice can make things right. Um, but sometimes all that happens is that you are changed forever. You are broken forever. And whether you like it or not, life keeps going on and on and on. And you have to keep going with it. And that's all there is. Sometimes there is no, you know, sense of satisfaction from justice or revenge. And I felt like that was like the most realistic thing I had read in a very long time. A couple of cons before I close out this review, and there aren't that many, there are literally just two, <laughs> because I really did enjoy this book. Um, the lack of quotation marks. So none of the dialogue in this book has quotation marks around it. And I'm not sure if that really aided the book in any way. Um, and for me personally, it felt like a distraction. And sometimes I would get confused as to whether a person was saying something or thinking it. And then the only major thing that I didn't like about the plot is that about halfway through the book, um, it becomes very obvious to the reader who the killer is. Um, and I'm gonna spoil it again. So <laughs> on page 173, um, you can definitely put it together. Um, and I'll read you exactly what it was that, that made me think, oh shit, I know who it is. Um, so on page 173, uh, Joe is um, talking to uh, La Rose and La Rose says there was this program where they took the smartest ones to have a special job in the government, something like that, gave a stipend of money, everything. Myla got in the papers, my aunt clipped the article, chosen for an internship. She looked so nice. 
wearing a white headband jumper she probably made in home ec knee socks. I know that much. She worked for that one governor you know. And like literally, the Lyndon says that same exact thing to his twin sister who recalls the conversation to Joe and his father just like a few chapters before. And so it was so easy to connect the two and understand that Lyndon was the attacker. So that kind of ruined it for me because it was incredibly easy to then know who it is. And then it was unrealistic personally for me and a little frustrating that Joe didn't put two and two together himself. Overall, The Roundhouse is an incredible read. I highly recommend it. I gave The Roundhouse five out of five stars. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.